Thank you. And so I will, uh, let's do the introductions first and then um, I'll go to the full, the, this, the screen sharing mode and we'll start walking through it. I, I wanted to, to emphasize the fact that this is really the only time every month that we have an open meeting where we can just get together and have the kind of conversation you just heard. I mean, it, it, it really is meant to be very informal, very, everybody can say what they say. And, you know, we can, we, we do a weather report. We talk about all the stuff that's going on. We talk about the stuff that we see on the horizon. We talk about the stuff that's just passed or where it's at. And, and so it really, we create a narrative in terms of the slides, but that's not meant to be where the conversation starts and starts and stops. It really is meant to be the point where we all come together, we all connect, and we just kind of get grounded in the same space in terms of what's happening right now. And so that's the point of this once a month meeting is just, it's just information exchange. Um, and so with that, let's go ahead and do introductions to see who's in the room, and then we'll walk through the agenda and, and talk about the updates and then anything else that you want to talk about, we can talk about that as well. Um, Maria, you're to my left on the screen. Why don't we start with you and then I'll, I'll say people's name and if you just give a quick self introduction, that would be helpful. Maria Kelly, Broadband Consortium in Slow County and working on Santa Barbara strategy. And I'm Bill Simmons, working with the Broadband Consortium as well. Sasha, you're next. Hey, Sasha here, uh, Communications Associate with the BCPC. Terry, you're next. Uh, Terry Theobald, lead troublemaker, Ventura <laughs> County. And then there's Shelby Arthur. Hello, Shelby Arthur, working with the BCPC. I'm uh, centered here in Santa Barbara County. And Greg Hayward is next. Good morning, Greg Hayward, CEO and founder of Trackable Health and big fan of troublemaking. And Greg's spending a lot of time in Alaska these days. Steve Weingart, good to see you, my friend. Thank you, good to see everybody here. Steve Weingart, Ridge Communications. We uh, provide engineering permitting construction maintenance and repair services for the wireless and fiber broadband industry in ventura santa barbara counties and throughout california hi lorelei hi there everybody lorelei capel city of atascadero economic development director i'm just working on the north county broadband strategic plan should have it off and running in the next um, couple of weeks thank you for joining us thank you Monica, long time no see. Hi, <laughs> Monica with at and Rich Grasick. Yeah, Rich Grasick, City of Lompoc, Broadband Administrator. Uh, yeah, just working along on this, trying to make something of it. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us, Rich. Gary Smart, you're next. Gary Smart, County Santa Barbara Public Works. I'm a traffic engineer for the county. And then there's Jamie Fleming in the community of Ojai. That's exactly it. Uh, I'm representing the city of Ojai and I also uh, head the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Jason Brashar. Good morning, Bill. It's been a while. Um, Jason Brazier with Lumen. I uh, used to run Air Force, of course, many moons ago and have been running non-appropriate funded agencies, but I've just stepped back into the role for Air Force Space Force. So focused specifically, of course, in this area around Vandenberg. Thank you for joining us, Jason. Thank you. Next, I see Randy Olson. He just popped on. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Randy Olson, yeah, also from Lumen Technologies, worked with Jason, and uh, straight out of 30 years in the DoD. Thank you for joining us today. Jory Wolf. Good morning, everyone. Jory Wolf, Magellan Advisors. Thank you, Jory. And Will Morat. Hey, I'm Will Morat, also with Magellan. And I will. And Laura Fiedler. Morning, Laura Fiedler with Slow County. And then Paul Chunet. We haven't seen him, since, Maria, since last night. Uh, good morning. Uh, Paul Chunet, uh, president of the board, Cuyama Community Services District, and uh, broadband advocate for the Cuyama Valley. 
you know, Paul would be joining us with his picture on, but then there's Kuyama. <laughs> he, he's a tireless champion of that town and uh, very much uh, good things are happening up there. We just can't have them happen fast enough. So, uh, Tim Tierney. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Tim with no camera turned on. I am doing GIS support for the Broadband Consortium. Thank you, Tim, for joining us. Helen Miller. Good morning. I'm the CIO for the city of Oxnard. Thank you, Helen, for joining us today. And Ryan Kintz, you just arrived. Yes. Hi, Bill. Pleasure Hi. to see you. We're doing self introductions. Hi. Who are you with? Well, Great. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ryan Kintz, everybody. I'm an assistant to the city manager at the city of Goleta. I've been working on the broadband stuff here uh, with Bill for the city of Goleta. So pleasure to be here. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Ryan. And Goleta has got big visions of becoming a smart city and we're going to help him do it. So, all right. Uh, so let's, uh, Sasha, do I have screen privileges to be able to log in now? You do, yeah. I do, thank you. Um, just walking through the agenda very, very quickly, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what's happening with the CPUC, answer any questions. Uh, we are funded by the CPUC, and so every time we do get together, we talk about what CPUC is talking about. Um, I'm gonna provide you an update on the Santa Barbara County strategy, and, uh, and we'll let Maria do that for us. She'll be uh, queuing her to be helping us talk about the digital equity uh, coalition that's coming together and uh, some of the ways in which that particular group has been working ACP and some of the ACP activities in Santa Barbara County and where that whole conversation is. Uh, I wanna just share some observations about last mile funding. And this is the big one that we're expecting in terms of funding sources, funding opportunities in the next quarter or more. Um, I want to talk to you about smart cities. Not a lot of time in this particular meeting for that, but anticipate a lot more time. And then the, the round table, and, and we'll talk about what's happening in each of our communities. If somebody needs to come early or go early and, you know, they need to, would like to share it to the group, you know, we want to provide you that opportunity too. So feel free to raise your hand. And if, if you've got to go, we understand at the same time, we also want to hear from you with anything that's going on that uh, you're willing to share. And, and we just want to support you however we can. So we won't spend a lot of time here, but we are funded by the CPUC, the uh, Public Utilities Commission as a consortium. Um, and these are through SB 156, the various pots of money that uh, have been coming. And I've, I've eaten crow a number of times. Using, I typically complain about bureaucracy, but this time they're coming through and they seem to be really coming through in a timely manner, and not only that, there's there's method to the madness. It, it's making a lot of sense what they're doing, and it, it's really pretty exciting. Um, and so there there what there is an adoption account uh, which we we were working with some not for profits up north, and some applications have been going in. Public housing is available as a as a funding source. We scampered around, and thank you to everybody that wrote letters of support for the consortia funding itself. We're expecting our funds run out in the end of October, and we're expecting new funding to be in place in December, in November again to, to match for the next three years, the wrap up of the last three years. And so that funds uh, have been, those funds have been accessed and responded to. And we're hearing, we got a round of questions, clarifying, which is pretty typical. And I, I, there's no reason to think that there's anything less than a green light in terms of our moving forward for the next funding cycle. Well, local area technical assistance grants is the, the most recent uh, activity and uh, a number of grants went in in the August timeframe. And uh, I'll let uh, Maria talk about what's happening up in Santa Barbara County and the grants that went there as part of her presentation if she wants to, but it's good. It, 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 by all indications, there continue, the momentum continues, the, the processing of the applications continue. And uh, instead of the money, um, being held up, you know, as I, I had predicted it might be, it, it seems to be flowing and, and working and arriving and, and being put to use in, in a very thoughtful manner. The last mile, I won't talk about too much here. Um, I've got a whole slide where I, I'm going to open it up to everybody and anybody to talk about it based on what I know and, and uh, the significance of it. Uh, but it's, 
Originally, it was talked about in the summer, spring. I think we're, now the latest we're hearing uh, is that it might be closer to the end of the year, first of next year. And there's a reason for that. The local area technical assistance grants is where we need the focus to be placed now, completely now. You know, it, it, it's setting a framework in place. And we'll, we'll talk about that framework two or three different times, but it's the framework for local governments to get engaged, to have the resources they need to get engaged and stay engaged and to build the capacity they need to do what needs to be done for the last mile and beyond. And so I would encourage every, if you haven't filled out your application as a community for local area technical assistance, do it now. There's still funds there. This is the time. It's fairly straightforward. It's fairly simple. We have resources and how you can do this and who can do this for you and walk you through the process, but it's important. I can't emphasize the importance. I know the County of, of Santa Barbara has applied. I know the County of Ventura has applied. I know certain cities have talked about applying. Please apply. It's, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a good source of money and the resources, you'll, you'll, you won't regret getting the resources and capacity in place and uh, doing the groundwork that's gonna be necessary to deliver broadband for all. So, um, before we move on, is there any other comments or questions or clarifications that I can put related to CPUC and some of these sources of funding right now? Maria? I want to um, share with everybody, we did do a grant webinar, a grant funding webinar, and it has been recorded. It's about 35 minutes long. Um, we got through it pretty quick. So if you want to if you had didn't catch that and you weren't able to join us for that webinar, it is on the BCPC website. Um, and happy if you email, happy to share all the resources, a grant funding guidebook, as well as an Excel spreadsheet, sort of of what's available now, what we're thinking of timing for the future. So if you would like any grant resources, please let me know and we can send that along to you. Thank you, Maria. I, I did know what you say, echo that. Uh, Megan Barris Ford is a, she's a rock star. And, and she did, has done a great job and we were, you know, she was putting, pull that webinar together and so happy to have her working with us and for us and it's <clears> great. <throat> you, you uh, I, we owe you a debt of gratitude for introducing us. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I was just talking to Megan this morning. Um, for those of you who are considering filing for LADA, please know that you can turn these around in less than 10 days. Um, and uh, as Bill said, there are plenty of um, services that are available, and I highly recommend uh, Learn Design Apply uh, and Megan. And if you have any questions about them, um, please let either Bill, Maria, or myself know. Um, I think we've done 14 uh, client applications for LATA with Megan and company so far, and we're working on four more. Uh, and also, please know that don't think that the money is run out. There's $50 million for the program. Um, and as of uh, September 16th, uh, there's applications in for a total of about 23.8 million. So there's still plenty left to go. And Jory, the turn, I, I, you, you talked about the 10-day turnaround. Um, everything I'm hearing is the, the conversations back and forth with CPUC are open, they're, they're responsive, they're getting you know, good feedback. It's, it's a very light process for lack of a better word, but it's, 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 it's an open process maybe. It's, it's getting the money to the people that need it as fast as possible and it seems to be working. Yeah, one of the things that um, you sh everyone should pay attention to is be certain that you break out hours hours for staff and hours by consultant by resource. Uh, they're interested in the title, in the name, the number of hours they'll be working on each of the tasks, and the total cost per hour, and then their contribution to the total project cost. Any other comments or questions about CPUC as we move on to the Santa Barbara County update? Okay. So Maria, I'll pitch it to you. Uh, Maria Kelly, it was her vision to create this strategy and uh, was very, very much influential a year ago now in, in introducing the idea to the leadership of the county and uh, 
putting the whole project together in terms of uh, its purpose, its intent, and, uh, and and the models involved with how to do what we do. And uh, she's been our, our project coordinator. And so we've collected a lot of data. That's the picture. But Maria, I'll let you take off from there and, and just provide the latest update that you might want to share. Yeah, thanks, Bill. So um, the slide that you see is um, the underlying map is the CPUC map. We've built, we put our data on top of that. Um, we are collecting speed testing in all three counties, mostly launched in Santa Barbara County, but we'll be promoting in Ventura and Slow County as well. This data is really helpful for grant applications. Um, what we did then, or what Tim helped us do then, was break it out by served, you know, identifying served, unserved, and, you know, priority unserved by CPUC standards, and then um, the, the testing data um, based on 100% megabit speed. Again, looking through the broadband for all lens. Um, and so just kind of getting a sense of what service is where. And then we can see on the back end how people are connecting and then the service provider. And the purpose of collecting this data is grant driven. It's to help us apply for grants. Um, and that is the purpose. So what we are in the strategy right now is we're incorporating feedback. The document is with Teleworks, um, developing some high level overall county sort of broadband analysis and snapshot. We still have some mapping to stick in there, um, but should be completely complete, not formatted, but all the people, all the words complete. Um, by October 10th. Um, right now we're working on scheduling city presentations, working on Goleta's as we speak um, to prepare and then working on the County of Santa Barbara. So we've had some city presentations still to, to schedule. Um, already in conversations around implementation and this ties into the grant funding. Because of the data we collected during the project and identifying areas of need, we were able to sort of mid-summer um, actually get two LADA grants put together between a, one submitted for the County of Santa Barbara. I'm looking at a countywide pro programmatic EIR, which is the best practice um, in Santa Barbara County being a rural county. It's a, it should help promote the acceleration of any sort of infrastructure deployment, as well as high level design. Going against the grain a little bit, we still, we did check with CPUC. They were not initially going to have MPOs or COGS as part of a an agency or an entity that could apply for the funding, but because of the way we organized in Santa Barbara and the way we see this model working really well for Santa Barbara and potentially other areas as well, is using the municipal planning organization as the hub for broadband work. So um, Bill inquired um, yesterday or the day before, you know, we, we, again, there were three COGS in that first 17 application for LADA and staff recommendation is to approve. Um, our MPO in Santa Barbara County, which is really exciting because it was a little bit risky to just sort of go out there and say, yeah, we understand CPUC, this is what you're saying, but from an organizational political structure where we need political will and we're, we're low on staffing capacity, so we really have to be collaborative. This is how we see this working. They're agreeing that that is an okay way to go. So we're excited to know that staff is recommending approval of that. Um, so that means that by, we really are, because of the grant funding, we are actually are already, even though the project isn't complete, we're already discussing implementation, which is absolutely thrilling to know that moving into 2023, that Santa Barbara County is, you know, being, is going to be able to plan for implementation. Um, while some of that has been completed, really would like to continue to promote the ongoing data collection and the ability to continue to get information into our open access GIS mapping system, um, specifically around the speed testing so that over time we can start really seeing um, where our targeted areas and priority areas are um, for infrastructure, whether it's and adoption. So whether it's digital equity, which Shelby's going to talk about a little bit more, some of this is digital adoption issues and some of this is, is infrastructure. So really excited to see this project moving forward. We did present last week to the SBCAG um, and it was really thrilling to hear the enthusiasm of the policymakers, basically all the cities and the board of supervisors, have the policymakers be so enthusiastic and supportive of a regional collaboration. So that so far, it's been very successful. So it's it's played out very well. Excited to see um, how this continues to move forward, potentially in, in other counties and other areas. So we already have some inquiries and how we organized and sort of what, what we're doing to help promote it. And um, so it's great for Santa Barbara County, super exciting program. Um, happy to answer any questions or 
just pass it off to Shelby. One of a picture's worth a thousand words. One of our purposes and points in being is to take this picture and turn it green. Every yellow point, every red point is going to be a green point. And every area that is red or yellow should one day be green. That's what broadband for all is going to look like when we're done. And, and, and so just having the tools and the measurements and the data from CPUC as well as our own data collection is doing a lot to just inform us of, of what the situation looks like and, and, and where to focus our efforts in terms of what we're trying to do. So one day, my friends, hopefully three years from now, maybe sooner, probably a little bit later, but we'll be looking at a green one and we'll, we'll be our last meeting. You know, the broad, the, we will have accomplished the work at hand, at least from an infrastructure standpoint. If I can just make one more point about the speed sure. testing data, because it seems to be the back end of this data, like I said, allows us to look for high, high level mapping and some grants, but also it is MLAB. So we're still crowdsourcing, you know, bigger data pictures, but what this tool allows us to do is to look at it and analyze it and utilize it ourselves because we can't, there's no real other way to access backend data other than Ookla. And we really wanted to see more specific targeted data. So that's why we chose this tool. It would be interesting to know how many IOT devices are draining this area. Uh, and how many more could be exploited or deployed should the broadband resources be expanded? Because I think that we're missing a big consumer, as you pointed out correctly, the autonomous cars need fiber, but so all of the smart devices and businesses and all those kinds of things, so. Totally agree, yeah, yep. Yeah. The solution has to be scalable. There's going to be there's going to be an appetite. It's kind of like in the computer days, Moore's law. It's going to be you know if the capacity exists, it'll be used. So, okay, uh, moving on. Shelby, we'll cue you up. Uh, one of the things that we didn't count on getting in, involved with so fast in the midst of doing the Santa Barbara County strategy was ACP and that provided us an opportunity. Yeah, so um, up in Santa Barbara County, we uh, are working with the Santa Barbara Foundation to draft a digital equity coalition charter uh, and working a little bit on a timeline to be able to launch out a digital equity coalition that will really focus uh, efforts on affordability um, and, and helping households get connected to affordable internet options and then adoption. So helping them walk through um, how to actually gain access to a technology technology device in their home, um, increasing the community access to digital devices, and uh, then also uh, ac access to digital literacy training. Um, so starting off with the affordable broadband piece, the CETF has launched some statewide campaigns called Get Connected Campaigns, and they are really trying to coalesce uh, uh, efforts to promote the ACP to eligible households by holding statewide events. We had one on August 27th. There's another one coming up on August 22nd or October 22nd, excuse me, and I believe they're planning one for the springtime. Uh, the reason these, um, these are sort of a, a great way to leverage resources. CETF is doing a large part of the marketing. They're doing paid promotions. They're sending mailers. Uh, they're sending, uh, they're doing social media, paid social media posts for organizations and for communities uh, where nonprofit organizations are holding uh, enrollment events to help people get enrolled in ACP. August 27th, we were, I mean, we knocked it out of the park in Santa Barbara County. We had uh, five sites across the county um, covering North County and South County. And, um, you know, I think that we were, we had as many or one more than Fresno County, which is a pretty big deal <laughs> because they're so big. Uh, but really the idea of the Get Connected campaign and other efforts is to connect folks with the federal subsidy program. So the $30 towards their internet service 
and then connect them also with the local affordable options through the ISPs that offer that here in their service areas. Uh, in terms of <clears throat> connecting them to an internet enabled device, the ACP also provides a one-time $100 grant towards a computer, laptop, or tablet. Um, we, I will share this information out after I'm done speaking. I'll try to post the link in the chat. But there is research, as Maria mentioned at the beginning of the call, that shows that small devices, small handheld devices, do not achieve the same success outcomes as having an actual computer or laptop in your home that you can sit in front of and use um, um, without distractions um, and that is not a small screen. Anecdotally, I will share that I am an adjunct instructor at Santa Barbara City College. I teach online classes. I've been doing it for 10 years. And yes, you can tell the difference between who does their homework on their phone and who does it on the computer. Um, the formatting is different for them. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm standing on a soapbox for a second, but um, you can see the, the difference in um, grammar and punctuation and the way that people are, are speaking um, or, or writing on their phones versus the way they might on a computer. Um, I know it's anecdotal, but I will post some of the research that's connected to, to larger studies as well. Um, in terms of digital literacy training, the Digital Equity Coalition is hoping is looking at the UNESCO framework right now um, that basically traces digital literacy from your, your initial point of entry with a digital device all the way up to internet safety and being able to proactively seek out information uh, on the internet in terms um, of health um, to, to access uh, health services, educational opportunities, career opportunities. Uh, so improving digital literacy training opportunities across the county and also creating them in a culturally responsive way and uh, through multilingual uh, formats. We wanna make sure that we can uh, reach all of the folks in the community that need this opportunity um, and, and utilizing partners that are already doing the work in the community uh, is the most effective way to reach those, uh, those households. In Santa Barbara County, Partners in Education is a major organization that is working on providing technical support and uh, uh, some connection to devices and to ACP. They, um, they do a great job. They offer um, like a, a hotline for families to call that are connected to a, a school. Uh, we would like to find ways that we can replicate that for households that are not connected to a school. Maybe they don't have small children. Maybe they are um, part of a college community or a senior community, um, part of a, a rural community that does not have children uh, in a school. Another really great model that we have, um, we would love to replicate is the Equalitech model out in Goleta. So shout out to Goleta. Uh, it is dormant right now. Uh, I don't know if they will be able to revive uh, Equalitech, but they actually did some great work pre-pandemic and through the pandemic in working with uh, local promotoras and, and neighborhood connections to train folks who, who were wanting to improve their digital literacy and then to train them how to go out into their communities and talk to people about how to improve their own outcomes and their own opportunities and, and then show them how to use uh, the devices and, and walk them through some programming to improve their uh, uh, understanding of using uh, technology. Um, we're really excited to pair up with Santa Barbara Foundation. They are the hub of the um, of the Digital Equity Coalition, and uh, we will be reaching out uh, once we've figured out sort of the framework for the charter and a timeline for launch. We'll be reaching out to other partners uh, who are already working in communities and who already have those connections with uh, households that that might be eligible for. Uh, these types of subsidized opportunities and that are in need of digital literacy support um, through education partners, uh, higher education, K-12 schools, health networks, libraries, um, and any other organizations that are embedded. So that's my update on Digital Equity Coalition. Uh, happy to answer any questions or I'll pass it back over. Maria, you have a question, Maria? 
I don't have a question. I have an, add on, an example to add on. When we're talking about digital equity, and this is an interesting thing that came up. We work with partners to put in a grant to the CPUC for some CASIF funding um, to do some outreach into Lompoc and Guadalupe. And one of the areas that we were talking about was internet safety for parents and, and having that be mul the multicultural and appropriate for by culture. And so we, had, we never heard back on whether or not partners was able to get that funding, but internet safety is also a piece of this as parents are monitoring their children and understanding how their children are using the internet. So um, it's also part of that conversation, which is also, it's, it's exciting and very empowering for families. So I'm gonna step back and talk a little bit about process um, and lessons learned. And Maria in the design of the project put outreach meetings as part of what we would do when we did the Santa Barbara County strategy. And, and the outreach meetings were in every community and it consisted of a panel of people from all the various sectors talking about broadband. And we had the education sector, the business sector, the policy leaders, you name it, there were four or five, six different panelists, community selected to talk about their interest in broadband. There was a method to the madness that I hadn't figured out at the time. And, and, and it was really quite astonishing how they all glommed onto each other. And, and, and so, you know, it was, it's great gathering data, but, you know, there, by just having those meetings, when ACP came around, they'd already talked about it. They'd already recognized the need for it. They already looked from their little stovepipe in the community, the other people's stovepipe, and realized, hey, this is something we all share. We got to do this together. And this whole digital equity coalition thing kind of became self-organizing because these people that don't normally connect had been connected. And so when the ACP push came to have these events on the Saturday in August, you know, we struggled in the North and the South to try to get people interested in this. But in Santa Barbara County, everybody's raising their hand saying, I want one, I want one, because they'd already recognized and had a conversation about that. And so it was really quite, uh, it was serendipitous. I, 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 we had, when, when, when Maria designed it, we didn't know ACP was gonna happen the way it happened, but we're glad that it did now that we know. And, and we, we discovered that because the conversation had already occurred among stakeholders, there was a lot to be gained in the community by moving forward together. And, and the coalition was born much sooner than we anticipated, but it, it, in a good way. And, and so all that's, I, I say that because, in, in the last week or so, Maria Shelby and I have gotten together and we're now talking about the North and the South. CETF has provided us funding to, to try to do similar things in, in, the, in Ventura and San Luis Obispo counties that is occurring in Santa Barbara County. The, the problem that we have is we have great leadership in, in, in the Santa Barbara County. They put their hand up and they said, we want a broadband strategy. And so we're, we're, we're kind of coming at it a different way, more of a grassroots saying, we, we, we know we have a network, we know we have relationships, but the leaders are off taking care of other fires. And so we're gonna have to be pushing this up, up a hill a little bit for a while before hoping that it'll catch on. You know, the funding is there, the resources are there, the knowledge is there, everything is there. We just need to figure out tactful ways of making it important and creating a sense of urgency. So, those comments are kind of wrapped up, meant to take what Maria and Shelby have just shared with you, tie it up in a bow and put it to you and say, you know, any thoughts, anything that you want to react to and advice you want to give us, we welcome it, you know, at this point. And, and I would love to hear what you have to say now that we've shared what we've shared. If I may, I have uh, found a lot of the pushback comes from, in my experiences, uh, the elitism of technology uh, and in this application I think that the assumptions made that if you have a phone you'll have a computer if you have a phone you'll want to use the computer if you have a phone you know on and on that are not true and there is a a generation almost can condition to utilize their phone for their interactions. And they have no intent of leaving that for a desktop. And if they don't, it's gonna be very hard to get employment 
that will allow them to behave in that manner. And so we're at a real juxtaposition. And I think what everybody's doing is fantastic because there was no swimming pool. Now there's a swimming pool. Now it has a shallow end. Now we can get people in and acclimated. Then we can transition them and make them swimmers, you know? And I think that maybe it's a simplistic viewpoint, but I, I applaud everybody's effort and bringing people into the fold that <clears throat> have been very miscategorized on how they interact in our world. Thank you, Greg. Shelby, I saw your hand go up briefly. Well, I just I was also thinking about um, you know how many families that may be using smartphones or relying on them for their access to the internet, but how many of those families have one phone for each person in their household, and how many of them are sharing one phone? And you know, um, so I think that it's a little bit more complex. Uh, the layers of complexity also go down to um, uh, cultural in some perspectives, because in some households, it is more appropriate for you to have something that you share with your whole family. Um, but then for success outcomes, when that comes to your schooling or your career, your um, job applications, you know, and, and internet access, do you, does your household have the bandwidth to support multiple devices? Um, does your household have the money to own multiple devices. So I think that there's a, a lot of layers to this also that need to be overcome. The other point that I'd like to make is uh, this is a time for innovation. You know, I, I, we have certain communities, uh, both in Santa Barbara County, in Oxnard, uh, in Ventura County, and in probably San Luis Obispo as well, that we're fine. We thought that they might have been communities in need, but as you go off and do the speed test and you you, you go off and collect the data, you talk to the providers, the, the, the infrastructure exists, the accounts are not being sold, the subscribers are not, people aren't using it. it it's, it's not the infrastructure, it's the adoption levels. And, and, and so when you start looking at those populations, um, I'm expecting... Monica and I were talking about it earlier this morning, you know, innovation. Innovation comes from the side of industry, you know, in the, in the private side. I'm expecting business, it, just because you might be delivering a connection to a household doesn't mean it's going to be occurring or paid for the same way it's been done in the past. I think that there's going to be new models, maybe public-private models, maybe different, you know, advocacy models on behalf of different populations. There's going to be different ways of being able to deal with the kinds of issues that Maria and Terry were talking about at the start of the money, the, the meeting here today. Uh, it, 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 there's going to have to be innovation. I think there's gonna, I think the public side, are, they're going to have to have skin in the game, yes. The, in, the industry side is going to have to meet it with innovative solutions. And, and that's going to be very helpful in terms of getting that overall goal of broadband for all. Um, any other discussions? This is an interesting topic. So with that said, let's move to this whole idea of last mile collaboration. Um, and, and this was a slide that I prepared for, if you recall the front first slide where it talked about last mile funding. Um, there is a significant amount of funds headed towards Ventura, Santa Barbara, and San Luis Obispo counties. There was a billion dollars, actually two billion, and, and the governor basically said, we're gonna put a billion in the cities and we're gonna put another billion in the rural areas. And we'll take how many rural counties we are with and their numbers and we'll take the, you know, the, the urban cities and, and their numbers and we'll split it up. Between the three counties, there's about $60 million heading our direction. And uh, I, Jory might be able to update me in terms of ETA, but last I heard it was maybe January right after the first of the year, maybe towards the end of the year, but it's still several months from now. Agreed. Yeah. What was interesting about it, as I look in the rulemaking, is a lot of these points, you know, and you, you read between the lines. I don't know who thought of this, but they were a genius. I mean, these points are really substantive. These points are really trying to leverage 
collaboration, resources, you name it, how many different ways you can. If you're going to try to, to, to get this money and come up with, first off, it could be a wide open horse race. Anybody can apply. So you know, if, you, if you look at the criteria, you, we could all go in separate directions and then we'd have a bunch of applications and then they'd have to deconflict and do this and do that. And it might take whoever knows how long it would be. Or you could take groups like ours and communities like ours, and you could try to take these criteria, the evaluation criteria, and through creation, innovation of organizations and partnerships and approaches, do something really significant, which I hope is where we can go next. That, that, that's what I hope you know, we're, that the next act is going to be for us is take digital equity coalitions and, 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 and put them to work and fund them with resources like this, but also be addressing the, the last mile needs out in the rural areas in partnership with ISPs to be able to make sure that we get broadband for all. So this is, consider this a list, consider this as our wish list, Consider this as we all talk and engage and start waking the rounds and talking to different cities and talking to different um, ISPs. Keep coming back to these kinds of criteria for working together, where we can look at certain neighborhoods and we can look at certain you know, programs and we can look, look at certain populations and we can look at the resources of who has what where and try to mix and match and develop a game plan for a real collaborative undertaking that's going to accomplish the job and really maximize the resources that we have before us. It, it, it's, uh, it's very interesting um, what, they're, what they're talking about, what they'd like to see and how they're trying to bias the evaluation criteria in the favor of creating organizations for collaboration and then engaging collaboration to occur to solve the problem. That's my take on it. I, mean, I don't know what else you can draw from these kinds of criteria, but I, I don't. I, I, it, to me, it's it's pretty awesome, and it's going to take a lot of work and interesting design, and uh, it'd be pretty exciting if we could come up with an approach of which we could all do this together in a public private way. Um, what's happened in Santa Barbara County with the ladder grants and putting SB CAG in a place? where they can uh, be an organization to make the application and with the relationships of the industry right alongside the municipalities, we think we're positioned pretty well to do that out there. We're, we're, we're engaged in conversations to try to do that same thing in the North and South as well. Dory? Uh, yeah, thank you, Bill. Um, you know, it, <clears throat> I, I I always come back to these points, and I think they're, uh, it's great that they're um, sharing them up front. Um, it's typically done um, with reconnect funds and uh, programs. Um, and the state, I think, is taking uh, best in breed kinds of uh, examples uh, and using them over again, um, which is really good to see. Um, one of the things that uh, I can't help thinking about, though, is that. <laughs> I think that there, you know, ought to be, you know, I think there's some strategic points here that the state's going to consider too, and that is, are you going to be using the state middle mile to deliver a last mile? Um, so I think what's really very important for everyone to consider, not only in your LATA applications, but especially coming up in your last mile applications that Bill said would be coming up in the window would be opening sometime around. December, January, or February, uh, I strongly suggest you emphasize how you're going to use the statement a lot. I think you're going to score extra points. Totally agree. That's a great point, Joy. I mean, I, I, it, I'm, I was slow at getting in the pool to use Greg's analogy, but you know, I think that I'm about ready to go from the shallow end to start swimming on that one. I mean, that really is uh, something that is. It needs to be done. We don't want to duplicate that effort. And, and um, I, I, I know that from an industry standpoint, it's been there's been it's been kind of slow talking open access. And and uh, 
but I, I think that when it's all said and done, we're, that's going to be something that we get more comfortable with as time goes on, and there's going to be incentives to get there and doing it together. Yeah, and God forbid, don't submit a design that's an overbuild of the state. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, I feel like we've given you a lot. Any other comments about this? Part of what Shelby and Maria and I need to do is try to simplify. I mean, this is, this is a lot of words. And uh, as the conversation continues to unfold, we're going to have to look for ways to uh, lessen the words but draw pictures or whatever we can do to to really be innovative in how we put these partnerships together and express what we're trying to do in the timeline we need to do it but uh, I, I just wanted to give you raw data today to get the, the conversation started put it on your radar i have a question sure, if, Steve. if i could yeah. is th is there a graphic somewhere that shows the state middle mile network as designed or built or both yes there is if you google the california state uh, middle mile network i'll take you to a website and um there is they do have maps of the various phases of builds that they are anticipating and uh yeah it, it's been an evolving uh topic but it's really getting to be, I'd say the concrete's beginning to dry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, the state has a very uh, thorough and comprehensive website uh, for the last mile program um, and for the middle mile program that they're building. Um, we strongly recommend that you take a look at that. Um, there's, um, you know, it really should be used as the foundation for what you're building um, for last mile, uh, as I said. But um, not knowing where the state middle mile is is um, going to be, I think, detrimental to your overall efforts in general. The state not only is looking for last mile that's built off the middle mile, but they're also interested in agencies that can offer up a footprint for a data center uh, and a cross connect location. They like to be able to drop uh, in specific locations, uh, the state middle mile and do um, a cross connect data center uh, so that the third party providers and public agencies can all connect in those locations and cross connect with one another for shared services and for digital commerce. I'll also share with you that as part of the Santa Barbara County strategy and planning, Maria was able to get us connected with Caltrans, a contact she had had over the years. And, and it was uh, the fellow that is the project lead for the plant design and engineering of the first phase coming down in Santa Maria. And, and they're dead serious working it. I mean, they got a timeline, they got the urgency, they're getting ready to build. I mean, it's not a, it, it's like, a, a this year next year thing i mean because this is phase one of phase two of phase three and we got to use this money up by 25 26 i mean there is urgency and there is execution occurring and i said would you want to work with us in some of the design and engineering oh yeah absolutely i mean there's no, you know there's the cultural change to me i'm, I'm astonished by then there is no non-invented here it, it's we got to do this we got to do it now and, and so you know I, I've been a consultant all my life working with government. I have never seen this kind of spirit of cooperation occur. It, it, it really is unprecedented in, in terms of my experience. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. It's good. Any other comments? We'll move on to our reports. Oh, I'm going to talk about Smart City. Give me 30 seconds. Um, we've had a three-legged... Uh, Bill, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, this will be quick uh, before we move on. Um, I think what's really also very important is um, if you're not aware, 
the the state has just recently um, the the Department of Transportation uh, has issued a comment period has opened a comment period for the private sector uh, to provide comments on their new proposed uh, Dig Smart policy um, for broadband installation within state right of way. Uh, so the, they're asking for comments, and the comments will be received. Uh, by close of business Friday, October 14th. Um, this is kind of, well, talking about innovations happening at the state level. Uh, we've been waiting for this for about two decades. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Sasha, we need to, to uh, put that in the, the upcoming missive, just a reminder pointing to the Dig Smart policy and, and steer everybody that direction and reiterating what Jory just shared. It needs to be, that's a nugget that needs to be passed around. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, to, to talk about the fact that we've had a three-legged stool all along over since we started in 2014, it was talking about infrastructure, inclusion, and innovation, the three I's. Um, never saw pandemic coming, but really as a result, the funding is arriving for the infrastructure. What Shelby and Marie are doing are really focusing in on inclusion and in, in the launch of these digital equity coalitions, hopefully in all three counties to be moving in this direction. Um, this next year, I'm going to try to light a fire into the, the innovation discussion as well. And, and so as the infrastructure is built, we want to be able to have the conversation be pivoting from the infrastructure to the people and eventually to the technology. And, and so um, just putting it on your radar, there, there, it, it, it's, this is the, the progression that's occurring this next year, 2023, we're going to be wanting to start talking more about tech um, events, technologies, projects, and, and showing the benefits of tech once you have broadband. Maria already threw it out there today about autonomous cars. That's just the beginning. I mean, it's going to be an exciting new world that we can create that everybody can take advantage of. So, and with that, let's just go through updates. Anybody have anything to, to share in terms of where we're at? Ryan, I don't know if you want to share anything. Rich, Terry, this would be a good time if you want to talk about before you go on vacation, you might want to just give everybody a shout out in terms of some of the things going on. Um, uh, I'd like to go. I'll just go real quick. Um, okay. Yeah, so a uh, pleasure to be here and pleasure to see everyone. So yeah, we're, we're really excited um, with all the awesome work that Bill and Maria are doing. Um, and we're bringing the... Uh, the broadband strategic plan uh, to our city council on October 18th. Um, so we have that on the calendar and we're excited to get that presentation um, from Maria and Bill. Um, and as Bill said, you know, here at the city of Goleta, we're really ambitious. We have a lot of tech here. We, we have a great relationship with UCSB and a lot of coordination with all the tech that's coming out of UCSB. So we do have this forward thinking vision, um, as Bill mentioned, as a smart city. So that's something that's in the back of our minds, but um, it's coming to the, the front of our minds as we really see some, some physical work that's coming out of this strategic plan. So we're excited to see that presentation come to our city council. So that's my only update. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Paul, I wonder if you want to give us any kind of a, a update as well. Kuyama, plant the seed. Rich, I saw your light come on there. I don't, I don't really have an update other than um, I just want to thank uh, the consortium for their support in uh, getting us on the list for, uh, for the, for the um, middle mile project uh, from the Department of Transportation. And we're excited about that. Uh, we've been without um, internet here for, well, forever, uh, with the exception of the school district which, you know, I, I wrote a grant and did that a number of years ago. So uh, other than that, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to see some construction here. And once again, thank you for joining us. Rich. Yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, frontiers in town uh, going crazy, laying fiber all over the place. 
It's actually right outside my building here. There's huge spools of it up on the uh, telecommunications poles and such. And yesterday I was on a National League of Cities webinar and they were talking about the digital navigators. So basically just following in line with everything that Shelby was talking about. And uh, in an internal staff meeting that we had, Shelby's name came up quite often about how we're gonna need to rope you in and work with you as far as getting the adoption and getting it rolled out and let people know what is available. So I'll be reaching out to Frontier and Comcast and just to get a better feel for what they what they know, mm. because they have bunches of peoples on their roles as far as the uh, implementation of low cost uh, Internet. That's kind of where we're at. Thank you for sharing, Rich. It's exciting news. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, it, it, it truly is just the magnitude of work that they're doing here in town is uh, pretty exciting. Yeah. Steve, how's your business? Let me unmute myself. Well, um, ironically, we're placing fiber in uh, Goleta right now for an ISP. I, I think you heard me get a phone call there and I had to uh, get with the crew on uh, answer some questions. So we're, we're busy um, placing fiber for ISPs, placing fiber for some of the tier one carriers, and then building and transferring wireless sites. Most of our business right now is in uh, inspections and remediations of GO95 infractions uh, on existing plants. Some of the carriers hire us to inspect for infractions in high fire threat areas, especially vegetation management, and then remediate or do the repairs. So we do a lot of that for um, some of the real common names that you would know. And then uh, something like this job that we have going in uh, Goleta, this is for a small Santa Barbara based ISP that provides uh, broadband commercially to businesses. It's so we're in the thick of it. Um, yeah. Also got a nice job at UC Santa Cruz and at the uh, VA campus in Palo Alto. So there's everywhere we seem to turn, there's, uh, there's, there's a need for more fiber, more wireless access, and certainly a lot of care and attention to everything that we have built or has been built over the last 25 or 30 years. Steve, are you aware, is there any truth to the rumor that there's a supply shortage in the fiber supply line? Um, it comes and goes. I mean, I've had some, some difficult times this year getting fiber cable, the, the Palo Alto project. Uh, it took a while to find what we needed. Sometimes, you know, we'll upsize the fiber if whatever is available. You know, the, the, the cost of the fiber, if you increase, let's say somebody designed, you know, for a 144 and you increase to a 288, I mean, that's minimal. That's minimal compared to the cost of the delay in getting it built. Uh, so it comes and goes. Right now, I, I was pricing out some... Uh, fiber for a, a project, uh, a relocation by LAX, and the product I needed was available. Mm. Thank you for your update, sir. And, and one, one thing that is points does point to the future, we are putting our toes in the water or in Greg's pool as mm -hmm. regards uh, electronic vehicle charging stations. Uh, you know, that's become a, a boom business in California, and it's being driven further by the uh, requirements for electronic vehicles and a lot of money being made available. 
But uh, what we're looking to do is, is try to marry uh, wireless sites with charging stations, especially when they start getting built out on the highways, away from uh, the city parking lots, and uh, give people something they can do while their vehicle's charging, you know, halfway between uh, um, uh, Bakersfield and, and uh, Stockton or wherever they might yeah. be. This is a time for innovation, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. Steve, are you seeing an increased deployment of, of the AnyHub? Pardon me? Are you seeing an increased deployment of any hub in the right of way? Uh, not that we're doing. You know, there are yeah. some rather large structures I've seen go up in the right of way that would indicate that it's more than just a radio receiver and, and a meter. So, um, you know, they, they've, there's got to be a way in the architecture to, to feed all of the wireless devices and fiber that's going out um, with kind of short range on them. You know, there's the old standard DAS hub and node architecture doesn't hold up um, when they start deploying a lot of small cells, but we, we haven't participated in it, so I'm not very familiar with it. Jory, it looked like Terry punted the report for Ventura County to you. Oh, looks like Terry signed up. Yeah, he uh, signed okay. off and he said that uh, Jory's here. He can handle it. Okay, sure. Um, well, good afternoon again, everyone. Um, uh, just a quick update for the County of Ventura. The County of Ventura um, has submitted their letter application. Uh, they submitted early. Uh, they were uh, among the first tranche uh, to go in. Uh, before uh, August uh, 16th. Uh, and uh, they have applied for close to $425,000 uh, uh, and they expect to do design engineering. Uh, and they also expect to do some project management using the lot of funding. Uh, the, uh, uh, the County of Ventura has uh, engaged with Learn Design Apply with Megan's group um, and with Magellan, and we are we have assisted them with the letter application. We are prepared now to assist them with the last mile application. Uh, we will be looking forward to CASIF. We might pick up um, maybe uh, in the first or well, probably the second quarter of 2023. Um, uh, looking at EDA again, if EDA is going to get out of get any of this money, especially after what's happening with bead. Um, and um, we are uh, in the throes uh, and any day now about to <clears throat> publish the county is about to publish an RFP. Because in preparation for last mile, and I encourage many of you who are looking to apply for last mile. Uh, you should, if you don't have any experience yourself in operating fiber networks, you should have a partner in tow. Um, so we are putting an RFP out for the County of Ventura. Uh, probably uh, it'll hit the streets next week. Uh, we've already been socializing the RFP with service providers and we have a number of service providers who are interested. Some who have voiced an interest in in-kind joint build uh, and even providing local match money. So. Um, we have a, a good plan uh, for going after uh, once we get LATA uh, to do design engineering and then to uh, go after with our partner uh, Last Mile and CASA. Back to you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Gray. Um, Laura, any comments from up north? I wanted to give you that opportunity. Sure. Good morning or good afternoon, I guess. Now we've been on the call this afternoon, um, everyone. So we um, are a little behind the curve on the LADA grant, but we are intending to apply by the end of the month. We had a little bit of a um, change in plan because while we were in the midst of um, creating our application for our broadband strategic action plan, we did get the good news that the rural counties, um, the RCRC, 
finally got their EDA grant. Um, and so in order to avoid duplication, we decided to allow that EDA grant um, to kind of focus on creating the action plan for us. And now we're kind of um, hoping that that um, can be completed within the next six to nine months. And then we're pivoting with our um, LADA application to see if we can partner again with RCRC to do um, some more network design work. I think our current challenges right now, we're trying to figure out the sequencing on that. Um, the LADA timeframe is not a long timeframe. We're still trying to make sure we can get the RCRC strategic plan um, in a reasonable amount of time to hopefully inform the work on the LADA grant. And then um, as we're hearing a lot, today, you know, there are some deadlines coming up in the in the winter in here. So I think it's um, for some of these other opportunities. So I think for us, it's a challenge of sequencing all these opportunities in the right way. And then the second challenge too, is that we have a couple municipalities within our jurisdiction who have applied for a lot of grant or are going to apply for a lot of grants, um, City of Slow, Atascadero and Paso. So we're just trying to avoid yeah. confusion and duplication on that and trying to make sure we're not stepping on each other's toes, um, either just from an efficiency standpoint or also importantly in the eyes of the CPUC in terms of what they see as duplication. Yeah, very smart. Very cool. I'm excited about the RCRC EDA grant. That's, that's really great. Yeah, that'll be a great catalyst for you too. Yeah, and I think, I think what we're looking at their, their suggestion for the um, a lot of grant which they've submitted I think at this point 20 or 30 times for other counties so we're looking to do perhaps something similar in our county. I think that's very a different model than our southern our southern friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay other comments thank you for that Laura. I'll give an update on uh, Moore Park and our proof of concept test. Uh, sure. We have taken down the hardware because it turns out that a road with a speed limit of 25 miles an hour has very few cars going less than 25 miles an hour. And it seemed the processing rate of the hardware needed to be uh, for more like 40 to 50 miles an hour. So we're going to uh, revamp that and deploy it again, but just huge kudos for the patience and the consistency Moore Park has shown in allowing us to do the discovery and advance this opportunity. Uh, Greg, what frequency are you using? Oh, it's a very low, like Laura, uh, kind of, I can't remember, 52 or something of that ilk, very low, right? So for those that, wasn't a, that weren't aware, Moore Park is like Goleta. They're, they're really wanting to establish themselves as a place where you take tech to test. And, and uh, they want to be pushing the, the, the smart city conversation forward. And so uh, it, it's we're, we're taking any city and municipality that wants to wave that flag and, and trying to do everything we can do to, to push that forward, connecting tech companies with cities that want to try the tech. And so and you know, I, I've kind of been around the block with uh, with trying to um, <laughs> keep connections with speeding police vehicles. Uh, <laughs> We tried 4.9 uh, frequencies first, but that basically basically is for something that's standing still or is permanently fixed to the ground. Um, we did find, though, that there are some frequencies um, uh, in the Wi-Fi spectrum that we were able to use. Um, Greg, I think, well, I know you're well-versed in this, but I think I'll give you a call and just see what, what you've uh, been using and what you've experienced so far. Um, I'd love to hear about it. I welcome that conversation, Jory. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. I think we're in the home stretch here. Any any other comments of things that to uh, share for the good of the order? You know, you mentioned Alaska. Um, I'll be quick, but Trackable Health has won an SBIR phase two contract with the Air Force Base out of Ielsen to provide a fit tech. Uh, gamified interface for being able to onboard wearable devices and improve the fitness levels and decipher fact from fiction and all kinds of insights that that will derive. And I was speaking to Bill about this and he said that he had heard of another 
high tech project going off in Fairbanks. And I've been in communication with the University of Fairbanks to try to bring some students in to get them some practical experience in a lot of things we're doing. And they're very much a community under duress. Uh, living in Alaska is difficult uh, during great times. And so when the times are arduous, it just makes it exponentially harder. And so bringing relief to the Air Force personnel that we can then roll out to the general community is very exciting. And we have some partners like NVIDIA and Advantech, SFL Engineering, uh, that have some great economy of scale to help us roll this up into an enterprise solution. Yeah. I was mentioning the University of Alaska has created a center of excellence in autonomous vehicles, and, and they're all over the country helping communities do things. And uh, uh, a lot of brain power coming from that part of the world. Very interesting stuff. All right. Anything else? Going once? Thank you so much, you know, just for joining us. Really enjoy this time. Really appreciate the opportunity to connect monthly and uh, just appreciate the fact that it is an hour out of your day. So we're very grateful for that. And if there's nothing else, we'll say goodbye. We'll see you next month. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. -bye. Bye.